Chapter Five of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem, Part Five. Jerusalem, the emanation of the giant Albion, can it be? Is it a truth that the learned have explored? Was Britain the primitive seat of the patriarchal religion? If it is true, my title page is also true, that Jerusalem was and is the emanation of the giant Albion. It is true and cannot be controverted. Ye are united. O ye inhabitants of earth, in one religion, the religion of Jesus, the most ancient, the eternal, and the everlasting gospel. The wicked will turn it to wickedness, the righteous to righteousness. Amen, Huzza, Selah. All things begin and end in Albion's ancient Druid rocky shore. Your ancestors derived their origin from Abraham, Haber, Shem, and Noah, who were Druids. As the Druid temples, which are the patriarchal pillars and oak groves, over the whole earth witness to this day. You have a tradition that man anciently contained in his mighty limbs all things in heaven and earth. This you received from the Druids. But now the starry heavens are fled from the mighty limbs of Albion. Albion was the parent of the Druids, and in his chaotic state of sleep, Satan and Adam and the whole world was created by the Elohim. The fields from Islington to Marybone, to Primrose Hill and St. John's Wood, were builded over with pillars of gold, and there Jerusalem's pillars stood. Her little ones ran on the fields, the Lamb of God among them seen, and fair Jerusalem his bride among the little meadows green. Pancras and Kentish town repose among her golden pillars high, among her golden arches which shine upon the starry sky. The Jew's harp house and the green man, the ponds where boys to bathe delight, the fields of cows by William's farm shine in Jerusalem's pleasant sight. She walks upon our meadows green, the Lamb of God walks by her side, and every English child is seen, children of Jesus and his bride. Forgiving trespasses and sins, lest Babylon with cruel og, with moral and self-righteous law, should crucify in Satan's synagogue. What are those golden builders doing near mournful ever-weeping Paddington? standing above that mighty ruin where satan the first victory won where albion slept beneath the fatal tree and the druid's golden knife rioted in human gore in offerings of human life they groaned aloud on london stone they groaned aloud on tyburn's brook Albion gave his deadly groan, and all the Atlantic mountain shook. Albion's spectre from his loins tore forth in all the pomp of war. Satan, his name, in flames of fire, he stretched his druid pillars far. Jerusalem fell from Lambeth's vale, down through Poplar and Old Bow, through Malden and across the sea, in war and howling, death and woe. The Rhine was red with human blood, the Danube rolled a purple tide, 
on the euphrates satan stood and over asia stretched his pride he withered up sweet zion's hill from every nation of the earth he withered up jerusalem's gates and in a dark land gave her birth he withered up the human form by laws of sacrifice for sin till it became a mortal worm but old translucent all within the divine vision still was seen still was the human form divine weeping in weak and mortal clay O oh, Jesus, still the form was thine. And thine the human face, and thine the human hands and feet and breath, entering through the gates of birth, and passing through the gates of death. And, O oh, thou Lamb of God, whom I slew in my dark self-righteous pride, art thou returned to Albion's land, and is Jerusalem thy bride? Come to my arms, and never more depart, but dwell for ever here. Create my spirit to thy love, subdue my spectre to thy fear. Spectre of Albion, warlike fiend, in clouds of blood and ruin rolled, I here reclaim thee as my own, my selfhood, Satan, armed in gold is this thy soft family love thy cruel patriarchal pride planting thy family alone destroying all the world beside a man's worst enemies of those of his own house and family and he who makes his law a curse by his own hand shall surely die in my exchanges every land shall walk and mine in every land mutual shall build jerusalem both heart in heart and hand in hand if humility is christianity you o jews are the true christians if your tradition that man contained in his limbs all animals is true and they were separated from him by cruel sacrifices and when compulsory cruel sacrifices had brought humanity into a feminine tabernacle in the loins of abraham and david the lamb of god the saviour became apparent on earth as the prophets had foretold the return of israel is a return to mental sacrifice and war take up the cross o israel and follow jesus every ornament of perfection and every labour of love in all the garden of eden and in all the golden mountains was become an envied horror and a remembrance of jealousy and every act a crime and Albion the punisher and judge. And Albion spoke from his secret seat and said, All these ornaments are crimes. They are made by the labours of loves, of unnatural consanguinities and friendships, horrid to think of when inquired deeply into. And all these hills and valleys are accursed witnesses of sin, I therefore condense them into solid rock steadfast, a foundation and certainty and demonstrative truth, that man be separate from man, and here I plant my seat. Cold snows drifted around him, ice covered his loins around. He sat by Tyburn's brook, and underneath his heel shut up a deadly tree. He named it Moral Virtue and the law of god who dwells in chaos hidden from the human sight the tree spread over him its cold shadows albion groaned they bent down they felt the earth and again enrooting shot into many a tree 
an endless labyrinth of woe from willing sacrifice of self to sacrifice of miscalled enemies for atonement albion began to erect twelve altars of rough unhewn rocks before the potter's furnace he named them justice and truth and albion's sons must have become the first victims being the first transgressors but they fled to the mountains to seek ransom building a strong fortification against the divine humanity and mercy in shame and jealousy to annihilate jerusalem then the divine vision like a silent sun appeared above albion's dark rocks setting behind the gardens of kensington on tyburn's river in clouds of blood where was mild zion hill's most ancient promontory and in the sun a human form appeared and thus the voice divine went forth upon the rocks of albion i elected albion for my glory i gave to him the nations of the whole earth he was the angel of my presence and all the sons of god were albion's sons and jerusalem was my joy the reactor hath hid himself through envy i behold him but you cannot behold him till he be revealed in his system albion's reactor must have a place prepared albion must sleep the sleep of death till the man of sin and repentance be revealed hidden in albion's forest he lurks he admits of no reply from albion but hath founded his reaction into a law of action for obedience to destroy the contraries of man he hath compelled albion to become a punisher and hath possessed himself of albion's forests and wilds and jerusalem is taken the city of the woods in the forest of ephrata is taken london is a stone of her ruins oxford is the dust of her walls sussex and kent are her scattered garments ireland her holy place and the murdered bodies of her little ones are scotland and wales the cities of the nations are the smoke of her consummation the nations are her dust ground by the chariot wheels of her lordly conquerors her palaces levelled with the dust i come that i may find a way for my banished ones to return fear not o little flock i come albion shall rise again so saying the mild sun enclosed the human family forthwith from albion's darkening lock came two immortal forms saying we alone are escaped o merciful lord and saviour we flee from the interiors of albion's hills and mountains from his valleys eastward from amalek canaan and moab beneath his vast ranges of hills surrounding jerusalem albion walked on the steps of fire before his halls and vala walked with him in dreams of soft deluding slumber he looked up and saw the prince of light with splendour faded then albion ascended morning into the porches of his palace above him rose a shadow from his wearied intellect of living gold pure perfect holy in white linen pure he hovered a sweet entrancing self-delusion 
a watery vision of Albion. Soft, exulting in existence, all the man absorbing, Albion fell upon his face, prostrate before the watery shadow, saying, O Lord, whence is this change? Thou knowest I am nothing. And Bala trembled, and covered her face, and her locks were spread on the pavement. We heard, astonished at the vision, and our hearts trembled within us. We heard the voice of slumberous Albion, and thus he spake, idolatrous to his own shadow, words of eternity uttering. Oh, I am nothing when I enter into judgment with thee. If thou withdraw thy breath, I die and vanish into Hades. If thou dost lay thine hand upon me, behold, I am silent. If thou withhold thine hand, I perish like a fallen leaf. Oh, I am nothing, and to nothing must return again. If thou withdraw thy breath, behold, I am oblivion. He ceased. The shadowy voice was silent, but the cloud hovered over their heads in golden wreaths, the sorrow of man, and the balmy drops fell down. And lo, that son of man, that shadowy spirit of mild Albion, Luva, descended from the cloud. In terror Albion rose, indignant rose the awful man, and turned his back on Bala. We heard the voice of Albion starting from his sleep. When is this voice crying Enion that soundeth in my ears? O oh, cruel pity, O oh, dark deceit, can love seek for dominion? And Luva strove to gain dominion over Albion. They strove together above the body where Vala was enclosed, and the dark body of Albion left prostrate upon the crystal pavement covered with boils from head to foot the terrible smitings of luva then frowned the fallen man and put forth luva from his presence saying go and die the death of man for vala the sweet wanderer i will turn the volutions of your ears outward and bend your nostrils downward, and your fluxile eyes englobed roll round in fear. Your withering lips and tongue shrink up into a narrow circle, till into narrow forms you creep. Go, take your fiery way, and learn what tis to absorb the man, you spirits of pity and love. They heard the voice and fled swift as the winter's setting sun and now the human blood foamed high the spirits luva and vala went down the human heart where paradise and its joys abounded in jealous fears and fury and rage and flames roll round their fervid feet and the vast form of nature like a serpent played before them and as they fled in folding fires and thunders of the deep vala shrunk in like the dark sea that leaves its slimy banks and from her bosom luva fell far as the east and west and the vast form of nature like a serpent rolled between whether of jerusalem's or Vala's ruins congenerated, we know not. All is confusion, all is tumult, and we alone are escaped. So spake the fugitives, 
they joined the divine family trembling and the two that escaped were the emanation of loss and his spectre for wherever the emanation goes the spectre attends her as her guard and loss's emanation is named enithamon and his spectre is named athona they knew not where to flee they had been on a visit to albion's children and they strove to weave a shadow of the emanation to hide themselves weeping and lamenting for the vegetation of albion's children fleeing through albion's vales in streams of gore being not irritated by insult bearing insulting benevolences they perceived that corporeal friends are spiritual enemies they saw the sexual religion in its embryon uncircumcision and the divine hand was upon them bearing them through darkness back safe to their humanity as doves to their windows therefore the sons of eden praise a bonus spectre in songs because he kept the divine vision in time of trouble they wept and trembled and lost put forth his hand and took them in into his bosom from which albion shrunk in dismal pain bending the fibres of brotherhood and in feminine allegories enclosing loss but the divine vision appeared with loss following albion into his central void among his oaks and loss prayed and said o divine saviour arise upon the mountains of albion as in ancient time behold the cities of albion seek thy face london groans in pain from hill to hill and the thames laments along the valleys the little villages of middlesex and surrey hunger and thirst the twenty-eight cities of albion stretch their hands to thee because of the oppressors of albion in every city and village they mock at the labourer's limbs they mock at his starved children they buy his daughters that they may have power to sell his sons they compel the poor to live upon a crust of bread by soft mild arts they reduce the man to want then give with pomp and ceremony the praise of jehovah is chanted from lips of hunger and thirst humanity knows not of sex wherefore are sexes in beulah in beulah the female lets down her beautiful tabernacle which the male enters magnificent between her cherubim and becomes one with her mingling condensing in self-love the rocky law of condemnation and double generation and death albion hath entered the loins the place of the last judgment and luva hath drawn the curtains around albion in vala's bosom the dead awake to generation arise o lord and rend the veil so loss in lamentations followed albion albion covered his western heaven with rocky clouds of death and despair fearing that albion should turn his back against the divine vision loss took his globe of fire to search the interiors of albion's bosom in all the terrors of friendship entering the caves of despair and death to search the tempters out walking among albion's rocks and precipices caves of solitude and dark despair and saw every minute particular of albion degraded and murdered but saw not by whom they were hidden within in the minute particulars of which they had possessed themselves and there they take up 
the articulations of a man's soul and laughing throw it down into the frame then knock it out upon the plank and souls are baked in bricks to build the pyramids of heba and terra but loss searched in vain closed from the minutia he walked difficult he came down from highgate through hackney and holloway towards london till he came to old stratford and thence to stepney and the isle of luther's dogs thence through the narrows of the river's side and saw every minute particular the jewels of albion running down the kennels of the streets and lanes as if they were abhorred every universal form was become barren mountains of moral virtue and every minute particular hardened into grains of sand and all the tendernesses of the soul cast forth as filth and mire among the winding places of deep contemplation intricate to where the tower of london frowned dreadful over jerusalem a building of louvre builded in jerusalem's eastern gate to be his secluded court thence to bethlehem where was builded dens of despair in the house of bread inquiring in vain of stones and rocks he took his way for human form was none and thus he spoke looking on albion's city with many tears what shall i do what could i do if i could find these criminals i could not dare to take vengeance for all things are so constructed and builded by the divine hand that the sinner shall always escape and he who takes vengeance alone is the criminal of providence if i should dare to lay my finger on a grain of sand in way of vengeance i punish the already punished oh whom should i pity if i pity not the sinner who is gone astray o oh, albion if thou takest vengeance if thou revengest thy wrongs thou art for ever lost what can i do to hinder the sons of albion from taking vengeance or how shall i then persuade so spoke loss travelling through darkness and horrid solitude and he beheld jerusalem in westminster and marybone among the ruins of the temple and bala who is her shadow jerusalem's shadow bent northward over the island white at length he sat on london stone and heard jerusalem's voice albion i cannot be thy wife thine own minute particulars belong to god alone and all thy little ones are holy they are of faith and not of demonstration wherefore is vala clothed in black mourning upon my river's currents vala awake I hear thy shuttle sing in the sky, and round my limbs I feel the iron threads of love and jealousy and despair. Vala replied, Albion is mine. Luva gave me to Albion, and now receives reproach and hate. Was it not said of old, Set your son before a man, and he shall take you and your sons for slaves? but set your daughter before a man and she shall make him and his sons and daughters your slaves for ever and is this faith behold the strife of albion and luba is great in the east their spears of blood rage in the eastern heaven urizen is the champion of albion they will slay my luba and thou o harlot daughter daughter of despair art all this cause of these shakings of my towers on euphrates here is the house of albion and here is thy secluded place and here we have found thy sins 
and hence we turn thee forth for all to avoid thee to be astonished at thee for thy sins because thou art the impurity and the harlot and thy children children of whoredoms born for sacrifice for the meat and drink offering to sustain the glorious combat and the battle and war that man may be purified by the death of thy delusions so saying she her dark threads cast over the trembling river and over the valleys from the hills of hertfordshire to the hills of surrey across middlesex and across albion's house of eternity pale stood albion at his eastern gate leaning against the pillars and his disease rose from his skirts upon the precipice he stood ready to fall into nonentity loss was all astonishment and terror he trembled sitting on the stone of london but the interiors of albion's fibres and nerves were hidden from loss astonished he beheld only the petrified surfaces and saw his furnaces in ruins for loss is the demon of the furnaces he saw also the four points of albion reversed inwards he seized his hammer and tongs his iron poker and his bellows upon the valleys of middlesex shouting loud for aid divine in stern defiance came from albion's bosom hand hyle coban gwantock peachy brereton slade hutton schofield cock cotope bowham albion's sons they bore him a golden couch into the porch and on the couch reposed his limbs trembling from the bloody field rearing their druid patriarchal rocky temples around his limbs all things begin and end in albion's ancient druid rocky shore turning his back to the divine vision his spectrous chaos before his face appeared an unformed memory then spoke the spectrous chaos to albion darkening cold from the back and loins where dwell the spectrous dead i am your rational power o albion and that human form you call divine is but a worm seventy inches long that creeps forth in a night and is dried in the morning sun in fortuitous concourse of memories accumulated and lost it ploughs the earth in its own conceit it overwhelms the hills beneath its winding labyrinths till a stone of the brook stops it in midst of its pride among its hills and rivers battersea and chelsea mourn london and canterbury tremble their place shall not be found as the wind passes over the ancient cities of the earth remove as a traveller and shall albion cities remain when i pass over them with my deluge of forgotten remembrances over the tablet so spoke the spectre to albion he is the great selfhood satan worshipped as god by the mighty ones of the earth having a white dot called a centre from which branches out a circle in continual gyrations this became a heart from which sprang numerous branches varying their motions producing many heads three or seven or ten and hands and feet innumerable at will of the unfortunate contemplator who becomes his food such is the way of the devouring power and this is the cause of the appearance in the frowning chaos albion's emanation which he had hidden in jealousy appeared now 
in the frowning chaos prolific upon the chaos reflecting back to albion in sexual reasoning hermaphroditic albion spoke who art thou that appearest in gloomy pomp involving the divine vision in colours of autumn ripeness i never saw thee till this time nor beheld life abstracted nor darkness immingled with light on my furrowed field whence earnest thou who art thou o loveliest the divine vision is as nothing before thee faded is all life and joy vala replied in clouds of tears albion's garment embracing i was a city and a temple built by albion's children i was a garden planted with beauty i allured on hill and valley the river of life to flow against my walls and among my trees Thala was Albion's bride and wife in great eternity, the loveliest of the daughters of eternity, when in daybreak I emanated from Lubeck over the towers of Jerusalem, and in her courts among her little children offering up the sacrifice of fanatic love. Why loved I Jerusalem? Why was I one with her, embracing in the vision of Jesus? Wherefore did I loving create love? which never yet immingled god and man when thou and i hid the divine vision in cloud of secret gloom which behold involved me round about know me now albion look upon me i alone am beauty the imaginative human form is but a breathing of vala i breathe him forth into the heaven from my secret cave born of the woman to obey the woman o albion the mighty for the divine appearance is brotherhood but i am love elevate into the region of brotherhood with my red fires art thou vala replied albion image of my repose oh how i tremble how my members pour down milky fear a dewy garment covers me all over all manhood is gone at thy word and at thy look death then robes me about from head to feet a garment of death and eternal fear is not that sun thy husband and that moon thy glimmering veil are not the stars of heaven thy children art thou not babylon art thou nature mother of all is jerusalem thy daughter why hath thou elevated inward o dweller of outward chambers from grot and cave beneath the moon dim region of death where i laid my plough in the hot noon where my hot team fed where implements of war are forged the plough to go over the nations in pain girding me round like a rib of iron in heaven o vala in eternity they neither marry nor are given in marriage albion the high cliff of the atlantic is become a barren land end of chapter five chapter six of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem, Part Six. Loss stood at his anvil. He heard the contentions of Vala. He heaved his thundering bellows upon the valleys of Middlesex. He opened his furnaces before Vala. Then Albion frowned in anger on his rock, ere yet the starry heavens were fled away from his awful members. And thus Los cried aloud to the sons of Albion, and to Hand, the eldest son of Albion. I hear 
the screech of childbirth loud pealing and the groans of death in albion's clouds dreadful uttered over all the earth what may man be who can tell but what may woman be to have power over man from cradle to corruptible grave there is a throne in every man it is the throne of god this woman has claimed as her own and man is no more albion is the tabernacle of bala and her temple and not the tabernacle and temple of the most high o albion why wilt thou create a female will to hide the most evident god in a hidden covert even in the shadows of a woman and a secluded holy place that we may pry after him as after a stolen treasure hidden among the dead and mured up from the paths of life and art thou not reuben and rooting thyself into bashan till thou remainest a vaporous shadow in a void o oh, merlin unknown among the dead where never before existence came is this the female will o oh, ye lovely daughters of albion to converse concerning weight and distance in the wilds of newton and Locke? so los spoke standing on mam tor looking over europe and asia the graves thunder beneath his feet from ireland to japan reuben slept in bashan like one dead in the valley cut off from albion's mountains and from all the earth's summits between sukkoth and zaratan beside the stone of boham while the daughters of albion divided luva into three bodies los bended his nostrils down to the earth then sent him over jordan to the land of the hittite every one that saw him fled they fled at his horrible form they hid in caves and dens they looked on one another and became what they beheld reuben returned to bashan in despair he slept on the stone then gwendolen divided into rahab and tirza in twelve portions los rolled his eyes into two narrow circles then sent him over jordan all terrified fled they became what they beheld if perceptive organs vary objects of perception seem to vary if the perceptive organs close their objects seem to close also consider this o oh, mortal man o oh, worm of oh, sixty winters said loss consider sexual organization and hide thee in the dust then the divine hand found the two limits satan and adam in albion's bosom for in every human bosom those limits stand and the divine voice came from the furnaces as multitudes without number the voices of the innumerable multitudes of eternity and the appearance of a man was seen in the furnaces saving those who have sinned from the punishment of the law in pity of the punisher whose state is eternal death and keeping them from sin by the mild counsels of his love albion goes to eternal death in me all eternity must pass through condemnation and awake beyond the grave individual can keep these laws for they are death to every energy of man and forbid the springs of life albion hath entered the state satan be permanent o state 
and be thou for ever accursed that albion may arise again and be thou created into a state i go forth to create states to deliver individuals evermore amen so spoke the voice from the furnaces descending into non-entity reuben returned to his place in vain he sought beautiful tirza for his eyelids were narrowed and his nostrils scented the ground and sixty winters thus raged in the divisions of reuben building the moon of ulro plank by plank and rib by rib reuben slept in the cave of adam and thus folded his tongue between lips of mire and clay then sent him forth over jordan in the love of tirza he said doubt is my food day and night all that beheld him fled howling and gnawed their tongues for pain they became what they beheld in reasonings reuben returned to heshbon disconsolate he walked through moab and he stood before the furnaces of loss in a horrible dreamful slumber on mount gilead looking toward gilgal and loss bended his ear in a spiral circle outward then sent him over jordan the seven nations fled before him they became what they beheld and hyle and coban fled they became what they beheld guantok and peachy hid in damascus beneath mount lebanon brereton and stayed in egypt hutton and schofield and cox fled over chaldea in terror and pains in every nerve Cotope and bowen became what they beheld fleeing over the earth and the twelve female emanations fled with them agonizing jerusalem trembled seeing her children driven by losses hammer in the visions of the dreams of beulah on the edge of non-entity hand stood between reuben and merlin as the reasoning spectre stands between the vegetative man and his immortal imagination and the four zoas clouded rage east and west and north and south they change their situations in the universal man albion groans he sees the elements divide before his face and england who is britannia divided into jerusalem and vala and horizon assumes the east luva assumes the south is his dark spectre ravening from his open sepulchre and the four zoas who are the four eternal senses of man became four elements separating from the limbs of albion these are their names in the vegetative generation and accident and chance were found hidden in length breadth and height and they divided into four ravening death-like forms fairies and genii and nymphs and gnomes of the elements these are states permanently fixed by the divine power the atlantic continent sunk round albion's cliffy shore and the sea poured in amain upon the giants of albion as loss bended the senses of reuben reuben is merlin 
exploring the three states of Ulro, creation, redemption, and judgment. And many of the eternal ones laughed after their manner. Have you known the judgment that is arisen among the Zoas of Albion, where a man dare hardly to embrace his own wife for the terrors of chastity that they call by the name of morality? Their daughters govern all in hidden deceit. They are vegetable, only fit for burning. Art and science cannot exist, but by naked beauty displayed. Then those in great eternity, who contemplate on death, said thus, What seems to be, is. To those to whom it seems to be, and is productive of the most dreadful consequences, to those to whom it seems to be, even of torments, despair, eternal death, but the divine mercy steps beyond, and redeems man in the body of Jesus. Amen. And length, breadth, height, again, obey the divine vision. Hallelujah. And one stood forth from the divine family and said, I feel my spectre rising upon me, Albion. Arouse thyself. Why dost thou thunder with frozen spectrous wrath against us? The spectre is in giant man insane and most deformed. Thou wilt certainly provoke my spectre against thine in fury. He has a sepulchre hewn out of a rock ready for thee, and the death of eight thousand years forged by thyself upon the point of his spear if thou persistest to forbid with laws our emanations, and to attack our secret supreme delights. So Los spoke, but when he saw blue death in Albion's feet, again he joined the divine body, following merciful, while Albion fled more indignant, revengeful, covering his face and bosom with petrific hardness, and his hands and feet, lest any should enter his bosom and embrace his hidden heart. His emanation wept and trembled within him, uttering not his jealousy, but hiding it as with iron and steel, dark and opaque, with clouds and tempests brooding his strong limbs shuddered upon his mountains high and dark turning from universal love petrific as he went his cold against the warmth of eden raged with loud thunders of deadly war the fever of the human soul fires and clouds of rolling smoke but mild the saviour followed him displaying the eternal vision the divine similitude in loves and tears of brothers sisters sons fathers and friends which if man ceases to behold he ceases to exist saying albion our wars are wars of life and wounds of love with intellectual spears and long-winged arrows of thought mutual in one another's love and wrath all renewing we live as one man for contracting our infinite senses we behold multitude or expanding we behold as one as one man all the universal family and that one man we call jesus the christ and he 
in us and we in him live in perfect harmony in eden the land of life giving receiving and forgiving each other's trespasses he is the good shepherd he is the lord and master he is the shepherd of albion he is all in all in eden in the garden of god and in heavenly jerusalem if we have offended forgive us take not vengeance against us thus speaking the divine family follow albion i see them in the vision of god upon my pleasant valleys i behold london a human awful wonder of god he says return albion return i give myself for thee my streets are my ideas of imagination awake albion awake and let us awake up together my houses are thoughts my inhabitants affections the children of my thoughts walking within my blood vessels shut from my nervous form which sleeps upon the verge of beulah in dreams of darkness while my vegetating blood in veiny pipes rolls dreadful through the furnaces of loss and the mills of satan for albion's sake and for jerusalem thy emanation i give myself and these my brethren give themselves for albion so spoke london immortal guardian i heard in lambeth shades in feltham i heard and saw the visions of albion i write in south moulton street what i both see and hear in regions of humanity in london's opening streets i see thee awful parent land in light behold i see verulam canterbury venerable parent of men generous immortal guardian golden clad for cities are men fathers of multitude and rivers and mountains are also men everything is human mighty sublime in every bosom a universe expands as wings let down at will around and called the universal tent york crowned with loving-kindness edinburgh clothed with fortitude as with a garment of immortal texture woven in looms of eden in spiritual deaths of mighty men who give themselves in golgotha victims to justice where there is in albion a gate of precious stones and gold seen only by emanations by vegetations viewless bending across the road of oxford street it from hyde park to tyburn's deathful shades admits the wandering souls of multitudes who die from earth this gate cannot be found by satan's watchfiends though they search numbering every grain of sand on earth every night they never find this gate it is the gate of loss without side is the mill intricate dreadful and filled with cruel tortures but no mortal man can find the mill of satan in his mortal pilgrimage of seventy years for human beauty knows it not nor can mercy find it but in the fourth region of humanity a thonet named mortality begins to roll the billows of eternal death 
before the gate of loss. Athona here is named loss, and here begins the system of moral virtue named Rahab. Albion fled through the gate of loss, and he stood in the gate. Loss was the friend of Albion who most loved him. In Cambridgeshire, his eternal station, he is the twenty-eighth, and is fourfold. Seeing Albion had turned his back against the divine vision, Loss said to Albion, with a fleest thou. Albion replied, I die, I go to eternal death. The shades of death hover within me and beneath, and spreading themselves outside like rocky clouds, build me a gloomy monument of woe. Will none accompany me in my death? or be a ransom for me in that dark valley. I have girded round my cloak, and on my feet bound these black shoes of death, and on my hands death's iron glove. God hath forsaken me, and my friends are become a burden, a weariness to me, and the human footstep is a terror to me. Loss answered, troubled, and his soul was rent in twain. Must the wise die for an atonement? Does mercy endure atonement? No, it is moral severity, and destroys mercy in its victim. So speaking, not yet infected with the error and delusion, Loss shuddered at beholding Albion, for his disease arose upon him, pale and ghastly, and he called around the friends of Albion, trembling at the sight of eternal death. The four appeared with their emanations in fiery chariots. Black their fires roll, beholding Albion's house of eternity. Damp couch the flames beneath, and silent sick stand shuddering before the porch of sixteen pillars. Weeping, every one descended and fell down upon their knees, round Albion's knees, swearing the oath of God, with awful voice of thunders round upon the hills and valleys, and the cloudy earth rolled far and wide. Albion is sick, said every valley, every mournful hill and every river. Our brother Albion is sick to death. He hath leagued himself with robbers, he hath studied the arts of unbelief. Envy hovers over him, his friends are his abhorrence, those who give their lives for him are despised, those who devour his soul are taken into his bosom. To destroy his emanation is their intention. Arise, awake, O oh, friends of the giant Albion. They have persuaded him of horrible falsehoods. They have sown errors over all his fruitful fields. The twenty-four heard. They came trembling on watery chariots, borne by the living creatures of the third procession of human majesty. The living creatures wept aloud as they went along Albion's roads, till they arrived at Albion's house. Oh, how the torments of eternal death waited on man, and the loud rending bars of the creation ready to burst, that the wide world might fly from its hinges, and the immortal mansion of man for ever be possessed by monsters of the deep, and man himself become a fiend, wrapped in an endless curse, consuming and consumed for ever in flames of moral justice. For had the body of Albion fallen down, 
and from its dreadful ruins let loose the enormous spectre on the darkness of the deep at enmity with the merciful and filled with devouring fire a nether world must have received the foul enormous spirit under pretence of moral virtue filled with revenge and law there to eternity chained down and issuing in red flames and curses with his mighty arms brandished against the heavens breathing cruelty blood and vengeance gnashing his teeth with pain torn with black storms and ceaseless torrents of his own consuming fire within his breast his mighty sons chained down and filled with cursings and his dark aeon that once fair crystal form divinely clear within his ribs producing serpents whose souls are flames of fire but glory to the merciful one for he is of tender mercies and the divine family wept over him as one man and these the twenty-four in whom the divine family appeared and they were one in him a human vision human divine jesus the saviour blessed for ever and ever salsi true friend who afterwards submitted to be devoured by the waves of despair whose emanation rose above the flood and was named chichester lovely mild and gentle lo a lamb's bleat to the sea-fowl's cry lamenting still for albion submitting to be called the son of loss the terrible vision winchester stood devoting himself for albion his tents outspread with abundant riches and his emanations submitting to be called enitharmon's daughters and be born in vegetable mould created by the hammer and loom in bola hula and alamander where the dead wail night and day i call them by their english names english the rough basement loss built the stubborn structure of the language acting against albion's melancholy who must else have been a dumb despair gloucester and exeter and salisbury and bristol and benevolent bath bath who is legions he is the seventh the physician and the poisoner the best and worst in heaven and hell whose spectre first assimilated with louvre in albion's mountains a triple octave he took to reduce jerusalem to twelve to cast jerusalem forth upon the wilds to poplar and bow to malden and canterbury in the delights of cruelty the shuttles of death sing in the sky to islington and pancras round maribone to tyburn's river weaving black melancholy as a net and despair as meshes closely wove over the west of london where mild jerusalem sought to repose in death and be no more she fled to lambeth's mild vale and hid herself beneath the surrey hills where raphaim terminates her sons are seized for victims of sacrifice but jerusalem cannot be found hid by the daughters of beulah gently snatched away and hid in Beulah. End of chapter 6 
Chapter 7 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem, Part 7 there is a green of sand in lambeth that satan cannot find nor can his watch fiends find it tis translucent and has many angles but he who finds it will find uthun's palace for within opening into beulah every angle is a lovely heaven but should the watch fiends find it they would call it sin and lay its heavens and their inhabitants in blood of punishment. Here Jerusalem and Vala were hid, in soft slumberous repose, hid from the terrible east, shut up in the south and west. The twenty-eight trembled in death's dark caves, in cold despair they kneeled around the couch of death, in deep humiliation and tortures of self-condemnation while their spectres raged within the four zoas in terrible combustion clouded rage drinking the shuddering fears and loves of albion's families destroying by selfish affections the things that they most admire drinking and eating and pitying and weeping as at a tragic scene the soul drinks murder and revenge and applauds its own holiness they saw albion endeavouring to destroy their emanations thus albion sat studious of others in his pale disease brooding on evil but when loss opened the furnaces before him he saw that the accursed things were his own affections and his own beloveds then he turned sick his soul died within him also loss sick and terrified beheld the furnaces of death and must have died but the divine saviour descended among the infant loves and affections and the divine vision wept like evening dew on every herb upon the breathing ground albion spoke in his dismal dreams o oh, thou deceitful friend worshipping mercy and beholding thy friend in such affliction loss thou now discoverest thy turpitude to the heavens i demand righteousness and justice o thou ingratitude give me my emanations back food for my dying soul my daughters are harlots my sons are accursed before me enitharmon is my daughter accursed with a father's curse o I have utterly been wasted. I have given my daughters to devils. So spoke Albion in gloomy majesty, and deepest night of Ulro rolled round his skirts from Dover to Cornwall. Loss answered. Righteousness and justice I give thee in return for thy righteousness but i add mercy also and bind thee from destroying these little ones am i to be only merciful to thee and cruel to all that thou hatest thou wast the image of god surrounded by the four zoas three thou hast slain i am the fourth thou canst not destroy me thou art in error trouble me not with thy righteousness i have innocence to defend and ignorance to instruct I have no time for seeming and little arts of compliment in morality and virtue 
in self-glorying and pride there is a limit of opaqueness and a limit of contraction in every individual man and the limit of opaqueness is named satan and the limit of contraction is named adam but when man sleeps in beulah the saviour in mercy takes contraction's limit and of the limit he forms woman that himself may in process of time be born man to redeem but there is no limit of expansion there is no limit of translucence in the bosom of man for ever from eternity to eternity therefore i break thy bonds of righteousness i crush thy messengers that they may not crush me and mine do thou be righteous and i will return it otherwise i defy thy worst revenge consider me as thine enemy on me turn all thy fury but destroy not these little ones nor mock the lord's anointed destroy not by moral virtue the little ones whom he hath chosen the little ones whom he hath chosen in preference to thee he hath cast thee off for ever the little ones he hath anointed thy selfhood is for ever accursed from the divine presence so lost spoke then turned his face and wept for albion albion replied go hand and heil seize the abhorred friend as you have seized the twenty-four rebellious ingratitude to atone for you for spiritual death man lives by deaths of men bring him to justice before heaven here upon london stone between blackheath and hounslow between norwood and finchley all that they have is mine from my free generous gift they now hold all they have ingratitude to me to me their benefactor calls aloud for vengeance deep lost stood before his furnaces awaiting the fury of the dead and the divine hand was upon him strengthening him mightily the spectres of the dead cry out from the deeps beneath upon the hills of albion oxford groans in his iron furnace winchester in his den and cabin they lament against albion they curse their human kindness and affection they rage like wild beasts in the forests of affliction in the dreams of Ulro, they repent of their human kindness come up build babylon rahab is ours and all her multitudes with her in pomp and glory of victory depart ye twenty-four into the deeps let us depart to glory their human majestic forms sit up upon their couches of death they curb their spectres as with iron curbs they inquire after jerusalem in the regions of the dead with the voices of dead men low scarcely articulate and with tears cold on their cheeks they weary repose oh when shall the morning of the grave appear and when shall our salvation come we sleep upon our watch we cannot awake and our spectres rage in the forests o oh god of albion where art thou pity the watchers thus mourn they loud the furnaces of loss thunder upon the clouds of europe and asia among the serpent temples and loss drew his seven furnaces around albion's altars and as albion built his frozen altars loss built the mundane shell in the four regions of humanity east and west and north and south till norwood and finchley and blackheath and hounslow covered the whole earth this is the net and veil of vala 
among the souls of the dead they saw their wheels rising up poisonous against albion urizen cold and scientific louva pitying and weeping tharmas indolent and sullen athona doubting and despairing victims to one another and dreadfully plotting against each other to prevent albion walking about in the four complexions they saw america closed out by the oaks of the western shore and thamas dash on the rocks of the altars of victims in mexico if we are wrathful albion will destroy jerusalem with rooty groves if we are merciful our souls must suffer destruction on his oaks why should we enter into our spectres to behold our own corruptions o god of albion descend deliver jerusalem from the oaken groves then Lars grew furious raging why stand we here trembling around calling on god for help and not ourselves in whom god dwells stretching a hand to save the falling man are we not for beholding albion upon the precipice ready to fall into non-entity seeing these heavens and hells conglobing in the void heavens over hells brooding in holy hypocritic lust drinking the cries of pain from howling victims of law building heavens twenty-sevenfold swelled and bloated general forms repugnant to the divine humanity who is the only general and universal form to which all lineaments tend and seek with love and sympathy all broad and general principles belong to benevolence who protects minute particulars every one in their own identity but here the affectionate touch of the tongue is closed in by deadly teeth and the soft smile of friendship and the open dawn of benevolence become a net and a trap and every energy rendered cruel till the existence of friendship and benevolence is denied the wine of the spirit and the vineyards of the holy one here turn into poisonous stupor and deadly intoxication that they may be condemned by law and the lamb of god be slain and the two sources of life in eternity hunting and war are become the sources of dark and bitter death and of corroding hell the open heart is shut up in integuments of frozen silence that the spear that lights it forth may shatter the ribs and bosom a pretence of art to destroy art a pretence of liberty to destroy liberty a pretence of religion to destroy religion oshia and caleb fight they contend in the valleys of peor in the terrible family contentions of those who love each other the armies of balaam weep no women come to the field dead corses lay before them and not as in wars of old for the soldier who fights for truth calls his enemy his brother they fight and contend for life and not for eternal death but here the soldier strikes and a dead corse falls at his feet nor daughter nor sister nor mother come forth to embosom the slain but death eternal death remains in the valleys of peor the english are scattered over the face of the nations are these jerusalem's children hark 
hear the giants of albion cry at night we smell the blood of the english we delight in their blood on our altars the living and the dead shall be ground in our rumbling mills for bread of the sons of albion of the giants hand and schofield schofield and cox are let loose upon my saxons they accumulate a world in which man is by his nature the enemy of man in pride of selfhood unwieldy stretching out into nonentity generalizing art and science till art and science is lost bristol and bath listen to my words and ye seventeen give ear it is easy to acknowledge a man to be great and good while we derogate from him in the trifles and small articles of that goodness those alone are his friends who admire his minutest powers instead of albion's lovely mountains and the curtains of jerusalem i see a cave a rock a tree deadly and poisonous unimaginative instead of the mutual forgivenesses the minute particulars i see pits of bitumen ever burning artificial riches of the canaanite like lakes of liquid lead instead of heavenly chapels built by our own dear lord i see worlds crusted with snow and ice i see a wicker idol woven round jerusalem's children i see the canaanite the amalekite the moabite the egyptian by demonstrations the cruel sons of quality and negation driven on the void in incoherent despair into nonentity i see america closed apart and jerusalem driven in terror away from albion's mountains far away from london's spires i will not endure this thing i alone withstand to death this outrage ah me how sick and pale you all stand round me ah me pitiable one do you also go to death's vale all you my friends and brothers all you my beloved companions have you also caught the infection of sin and stern repentance i see disease arise upon you yet speak to me and give me some comfort why do you all stand silent i alone remain in permanent strength or is all this goodness and pity only that you may take the greater vengeance in your sepulchre so los spoke pale they stood around the house of death in the midst of temptations and despair among the rooted oaks among reared rocks of albion's sons at length they rose with one accord in love sublime and as on cherub's wings they albion surround with kindest violence to bear him back against his will through losses gate to eden fourfold loud their wings waving over the bottomless immense to bear their awful charge back to his native home but albion dark repugnant rolled his wheels backward into nonentity loud roll the starry wheels of albion into the world of death and all the gate of loss clouded with clouds redounding from albion's dread wheels stretching out spaces immense between that every little particle of light and air became opaque black and immense a rock of difficulty and a cliff of black despair that the immortal wings laboured against cliff after cliff and over valleys of despair and death the narrow sea between albion and the atlantic continent its waves of pearl became a boundless ocean bottomless 
of grey obscurity filled with clouds and rocks and whirling waters and albion's sons ascending and descending in the horrid void but as the will must not be bended but in the day of divine power silent calm and motionless in the mid-air sublime the family divine hover around the darkened albion such is the nature of the uro that whatever enters becomes sexual and is created and vegetated and born from hyde park spread their vegetating roots beneath albion in dreadful pain the spectrous uncircumcised vegetation forming a sexual machine an aged virgin form in erin's land toward the north joint after joint and burning in love and jealousy immingled and calling it religion and feeling the damps of death they with one accord delegated loss conjuring him by the highest that he should watch over them till jesus shall appear and they gave their power to loss naming him the spirit of prophecy calling him elijah strucken with albion's disease they become what they behold they assimilate with albion in pity and compassion their emanations return not their spectres rage in the deep the slumbers of death came over them around the couch of death before the gate of loss and in the depths of non-entity among the furnaces of loss among the oaks of albion man is adjoined to man by his emanative portion who is jerusalem in every individual man and her shadow is vala builded by the reasoning power in man o oh, search and see turn your eyes upward open o oh, thou world of love and harmony in man expand thy ever lovely gates they wept into the deeps a little space at length was heard the voice of ba faint as the voice of the dead in the house of death ba healing city whose wisdom in midst of poetic fervour mild spoke through the western porch in soft gentle tears o albion mildest son of eden closed is thy western gate brothers of eternity this man whose great example we all admired and loved whose all benevolent countenance seen in eden in lovely jerusalem drew even from envy the tear and the confession of honesty open and undisguised from mistrust and suspicion the man is himself become a piteous example of oblivion to teach the sons of eden that however great and glorious however loving and merciful the individuality however high our palaces and cities and however fruitful are our fields in selfhood we are nothing but fade away in morning's breath our mildness is nothing the greatest mildness we can use is incapable and nothing none but the lamb of god can heal this dread disease none but jesus o oh lord descend and save albion's western gate is closed his death is coming apace jesus alone can save him for alas we none can know how soon his lot may be our own when africa in sleep rose in the night of beulah and bound down the sun and moon his friends cut his strong chains and overwhelmed his dark machines in fury and destruction and the man reviving repented he wept before his wrathful brethren thankful and considerate for their well-timed wrath but albion's sleep is not like africa's and his machines are woven with his life 
nothing but mercy can save him nothing but mercy interposing lest he should slay jerusalem in his fearful jealousy oh god descend gather our brother and deliver jerusalem but that we may omit no office of the friendly spirit oxford take thou these leaves of the tree of life with eloquence that thy immortal tongue inspires present them to albion perhaps he may receive them offered from thy loved hands so spoke unheard by albion the merciful son of heaven to those whose western gates were open as they stood weeping around albion but albion heard him not obdurate hard he frowned on all his friends counting them enemies in his sorrow End of chapter 7chapter eight of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison jerusalem part eight and the seventeen conjoining with bath the seventh in whom the other ten shone manifest a divine vision and these the names of the eighteen combining with those ten bath mild physician of eternity mysterious power whose springs are unsearchable and knowledge infinite hereford ancient guardian of wales whose hands builded the mountain palaces of eden stupendous works lincoln durham and carlisle counsellors of loss and ely scribe of loss whose pen no other hand dare touch oxford immortal bard with eloquence divine he wept over albion speaking the words of god in mild persuasion bringing leaves of the tree of life thou art in error albion the land of ulro one error not removed will destroy a human soul repose in beulah's night till the error is removed reason not on both sides repose upon our bosoms till the plough of jehovah and the harrow of shaddai have passed over the dead to awake the dead to judgment but albion turned away refusing comfort oxford trembled while he spoke then fainted in the arms of norwich peterborough rochester chester awful worcester lichfield st david's lander asaph bangor sodor bowing their heads devoted and the furnaces of loss began to rage thundering loud the storms began to roar upon the furnaces and loud the furnaces rebellow beneath and these the four in whom the twenty-four appeared fourfold verulam london york edinburgh mourning one towards another alas the time will come when a man's worst enemies shall be those of his own house and family in a religion of generation to destroy by sin and atonement happy jerusalem the bride and wife of the lamb o oh god thou art not an avenger from camberwell to highgate where the mighty thames shudders along where losses furnaces stand where jerusalem and vala howl louver 
tore forth from Albion's loins in fibrous veins, in rivers of blood over Europe, a vegetating root in grinding pain, animating the dragon temples soon to become that holy fiend, the wicker man of Scandinavia, in which, cruelly consumed, the captives reared to heaven howl in flames among the stars loud the cries of war on the rhine and danube with albion's sons away from beulah's hills and vale break forth the souls of the dead with cymbal trumpet clarion and the scythed chariots of britain and the veil of valour is composed of the spectres of the dead hark the mingling cries of luva with the sons of albion hark and record the terrible wonder that the punisher mingles with his victim's spectre enslaved and tormented to him whom he has murdered bound in vengeance and enmity shudder not but write and the hand of god will assist you therefore i write albion's last word hope is banished from me these were his last words and the merciful saviour in his arms received him in the arms of tender mercy and reposed the pale limbs of his eternal individuality upon the rock of ages then surrounded with a cloud in silence the divine lord builded with immortal labour of gold and jewels a sublime ornament a couch of repose with sixteen pillars canopied with emblems and written verse spiritual verse ordered and measured from whence time shall reveal the five books of the decalogue the books of joshua and judges samuel a double book and kings a double book the psalms and prophets the fourfold gospel and the revelations everlasting eternity groaned and was troubled at the image of eternal death beneath the bottoms of the graves which is earth's central joint there is a place where contrarieties are equally true to protect from the giant blows in the sports of intellect thunder in the midst of kindness and love that kills its beloved because death is but a period and they renew tenfold from this sweet place maternal love awoke jerusalem with pangs she forsook beulah's pleasant lovely shadowy universe when no dispute can come created for those who sleep weeping was in all beulah and all the daughters of beulah wept for their sister the daughter of albion jerusalem when out of beulah the emanation of the sleeper descended with solemn morning out of beulah's moony shades and hills within the human heart whose gates closed with solemn sound and this the manner of the terrible separation the emanations of the grievously afflicted friends of albion concenter in one female form an aged pensive woman astonished lovely embracing the sublime shade the daughters of beulah 
beheld her with wonder with awful hands she took a moment of time drawing it out with many tears and afflictions and many sorrows a bleak across the atlantic veil which is the veil of raphaim dreadful from east to west where the human harvest waves abundant in the beams of eden into a rainbow of jewels and gold a mild reflection from albion's dread tomb eight thousand and five hundred years in its extension every two hundred years has a door to eden she also took an atom of space with dire pain opening it a centre into beulah trembling the daughters of beulah dried her tears she ardent embraced her sorrows occupied in labours of sublime mercy in raphaim's veil perusing albion's tomb she sat she walked among the ornaments solemn morning the daughters attended her shudderings wiping the death sweat loss also saw her in his seventh furnace he also terrified saw the finger of god go forth upon his seventh furnace away from the starry wheels to prepare jerusalem a place when with a dreadful groan the emanation mild of albion burst from his bosom in the tomb like a pale snowy cloud female and lovely struggling to put off the human form writhing in pain the daughters of beulah in kind arms received jerusalem weeping over her among the spaces of erin in the ends of beulah where the dead wail night and day and thus erin spoke to the daughters of beulah in soft tears albion the vortex of the dead albion the generous albion the mildest son of heaven the place of holy sacrifice where friends die for each other will become the place of murder and unforgiving never awaking sacrifice of enemies the children must be sacrificed a horror never known till now in beulah unless a refuge can be found to hide them from the wrath of albion's law that freezes sore upon his sons and daughters self-exiled from his bosom draw ye jerusalem away from albion's mountains to give a place for redemption let sihon and og remove eastward to bashan and gilead and leave the secret coverts of albion and the hidden places of america jerusalem jerusalem why wilt thou turn away come ye o daughters of beulah lament for og and sihon upon the lakes of ireland from Rathlin to Baltimore, stand ye upon the Dargle, from Wicklow to Drogheda, come and mourn over Albion, the white cliff of the Atlantic, the mountain of giants. All the giants of Albion are become weak, withered, darkened, and Jerusalem is cast forth from Albion. They deny that they ever knew Jerusalem, or ever dwelt in Shiloh. The gigantic roots and twigs of the vegetating sons of Albion, filled with the little ones, are consumed in the fires of their altars. The vegetating cities are burned and consumed from the earth, and the bodies in which all animals and vegetations, the earth and heaven, were contained in all glorious imagination are withered and darkened the golden gate of havilah 
and all the garden of god was caught up with the sun in one day a fury and war the lungs the heart the liver shrunk away far distant from man and left a little slimy substance floating upon the tides in one night the atlantic continent was caught up with the moon and became an opaque globe far distant clad with moony beams the visions of eternity by reason of narrowed perceptions are become weak visions of time and space fixed into furrows of death till deep dissimulation is the only defence an honest man has left o oh, polypus of death o oh, spectre over europe and asia withering the human form by laws of sacrifice for sin by laws of chastity and abhorrence i am withered up striving to create a heaven in which all shall be pure and holy in their own selfhoods in natural selfish chastity to banish pity and dear mutual forgiveness and to become one great satan enslaved to the most powerful selfhood to murder the divine humanity in whose sight all are as the dust and who chargeth his angels with folly ah weak and wide astray ah shut in narrow doleful form creeping in reptile flesh upon the bosom of the ground the eye of man a little narrow orb closed up and dark scarcely beholding the great light conversing with the ground the ear a little shell in small volutions shutting out true harmonies and comprehending great as very small the nostrils bent down to the earth and closed with senseless flesh that odours cannot them expand nor joy on them exult the tongue a little moisture fills a little food it cloys a little sound it utters and its cries are faintly heard therefore they are removed therefore they have taken root in egypt and philistea in moab and edam and aram in the erythraean sea their uncircumcision in heart and loins be lost for ever and ever then they shall arise from self by self annihilation into jerusalem's courts and into shiloh shiloh the masculine emanation among the flowers of beulah lo shiloh dwells over france as jerusalem dwells over albion build and prepare a wall and curtain for america's shore rush on rush on rush on ye vegetating sons of albion the sun shall go before you in day the moon shall go before you in night come on come on come on the lord jehovah is before behind above beneath around he has builded the archers of albion's tomb binding the stars in merciful order bending the laws of cruelty to peace he hath placed og and anak the giants of albion for their guards building the body of moses and the valley of peor the body of divine analogy and og and sion in the tears of balaam the son of baor have given their power to joshua and caleb remove from albion 
far removed these terrible surfaces they are beginning to form heavens and hells in immense circles the hells for food to the heavens food of torment food of despair they drink the condemned soul and rejoice in cruel holiness in their heavens of chastity and uncircumcision yet they are blameless and iniquity must be imputed only to the state they are entered into that they may be delivered satan is the state of death and not a human existence but luba is named satan because he has entered that state a world where man is by nature the enemy of man because the evil is created into a state that men may be delivered time after time evermore amen learn therefore o sisters to distinguish the eternal human that walks about among the stones of fire in bliss and woe alternate from those states or worlds in which the spirit travels this is the only means to forgiveness of enemies therefore remove from albion these terrible surfaces and let wild seas and rocks close up jerusalem away from the atlantic mountains where giants dwelt in intellect now given to stony druids and allegoric generation to the twelve gods of asia the spectres of those who sleep swayed by a providence opposed to the divine lord jesus a murderous providence a creation that groans living on death where fish and bird and beast and man and tree and metal and stone live by devouring going into eternal death continually albion is now possessed by the war of blood the sacrifice of envy albion is become and his emanation cast out come lord jesus lamb of god descend for if o oh lord if thou hadst been here our brother albion had not died arise sisters go ye and meet the lord while i remain behold the foggy mornings of the dead on albion's cliffs ye know that if the emanation remains in them she will become an eternal death an avenger of sin a self-righteousness the proud virgin harlot mother of war and we also and all beulah consume beneath albion's curse so erin spoke to the daughters of beulah shuddering with their wings they sat in the furnace in a night of stars for all the sons of albion appeared distant stars ascending and descending into albion's sea of death and erin's lovely bow enclosed the wheels of albion's sons expanding on wing the daughters of beulah replied in sweet response come o thou lamb of god and take away the remembrance of sin to sin and to hide the sin in sweet deceit is lovely to sin in the open face of day is cruel and pitiless but to record the sin for a reproach to let the sun go down in remembrance of the sin is a woe and a horror a brooder of an evil day and a sun rising in blood come then o lamb of god and take away the remembrance of sin End of chapter eight